Good morning and welcome. I'm John Fitzpatrick, Senior Director of Records Access and Information Security Management at the National Security Council. It is my honor and privilege to be here this morning to introduce our distinguished guests. I'll pause for just a moment. to introduce our distinguished guests and to provide information about the final release of records for what is a most historic and significant exchange between our nations, the U.S. Declassification Project for Argentina. We are here for the presentation of more than 5,500 records totaling over 43,000 pages of declassified documents related to human rights abuses committed during the military occupancy of Argentina. This release of records concludes a multi-year effort conducted by more than 16 executive branch agencies and departments beginning in 2016 and spanning two administrations. Upon request by Argentine President Mauricio Macri, President Obama announced during his 2016 visit to Buenos Aires that the U.S. government would embark on a comprehensive effort to identify additional records related to human rights abuses. In 2017, President Macri personally renewed his request to President Trump, and since then, the President has personally participated in the project, delivering records to President Macri during his visit to Washington, D.C. in April of 2017. Under the direction of the President, the project has resulted in the declassification and release of more than 7,000 records, close to 50,000 pages of information, for the benefit of the Argentine people. More than 380 members of the federal workforce contributed more than 30,000 hours to ensure the president's tasking, which called for erring on the side of inclusiveness in the search for records, to ensure that it was successful. We're pleased to commemorate this event with our partners, and we welcome the distinguished guests from the Argentine delegation. Minister Herman, Herman Carlos Garavano joins us on behalf of President Macri, and will be accepting the records during our ceremony. Minister Garavano has served as the Minister of Justice and Human Rights since 2015. And prior to his tenure as minister, he served as the Attorney General of the City of Buenos Aires from 2007 to 2014. From 2005 to 2007, he was the Deputy Vice President of the Council of Attorney Generals, Attorneys, Public Defenders, and General Advisors of the Argentine Republic. In 2005, Minister Garavano was elected Vice President of the Justice Studies Center of the Americas by the Organization of American States. He was also elected Judge for the Autonomous City of Buenos Aires from 2003 to 2007, and his career includes extensive academic work across Latin America in the field of judicial reform. We will be hearing from him shortly, but I'm pleased to welcome and introduce Minister Garavano. I'm also pleased to welcome Argentine Ambassador to the United States, Fernando Ores de Roa, and his lovely wife, Stephen, is here. We are pleased the Ambassador is able to join us this morning, although we thought for a minute he was going to be called to the White House, but we have uh, worked things out appropriately, and your commitment to attend this ceremony speaks volumes as to its significance to the Argentine people. Thank you for being here. I'd also like to welcome Ms. Gabrielle Quinteros, Director of the Human Rights Bureau of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Worship. We also welcome our guests from the Argentine Embassy and senior officials representing the participating government uh, agencies and department that work so diligently on the project. On the U.S. side, we welcome Corin Stone, Deputy Director of National Intelligence for Strategy and Engagement at the Office of the Director of National Intelligence. Corin is representing the collective efforts of the intelligence community community, including the Central Intelligence Agency, and in particular represents the leadership the ODNI has taken to ensure the online release of these records to the public. We'll talk about that website later in the proceedings. I welcome Assistant Attorney General for National Security, the Honorable, the Honorable John Demers, who represents the Department of Justice to include the Federal Bureau of Investigation that played a significant role in the review of law enforcement and intelligence records. I also welcome the Honorable John Dinkelman, Acting Assistant Secretary for Administration, and Kevin O'Reilly, Deputy Assistant Secretary for Western Hemisphere Affairs, both from the Department of State. 
Karen Myers, Director of the Executive Services Directorate at Washington Headquarters Services, joins us to represent the components from the Department of Defense that supported the project. Those many components include the departments of the Air Force, Army, and Navy, the Defense Intelligence Agency, Office of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, the National Security Agency, the Office of the Secretary of Defense, and the Southern Command. No stone unturned in their signature. We have in the audience today agency program managers and declassifiers, as well as leaders from civil society, whose support has been substantial in bringing increased awareness to the project. Next, I'd like to introduce the leader of the National Archives and our presiding official today, the Archivist of the United States, the Honorable David S. Ferriel. David S. Ferriel was confirmed as the 10th Archivist of the United States in November 2009. National Archives and Records Administration is responsible for preserving and providing access to the records of the U.S. government. NARA has 40, 44 facilities across the country, including 14 presidential libraries, containing approximately 14 billion, with a B, billion pages of textual records, 43 million photographs, miles and miles of film and video, and an ever-increasing number of electronic records. Previously, Mr. Ferriero served as the Andrew W. Mellon Director of the New York Public Libraries and held top positions at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology and Duke University. Mr. Ferriero will offer his remarks and then present the records to the minister. David. Thank you, John, and good morning. A special welcome to Attorney General Carvano, Ambassador DeRayo, and Director Conteros. I'm honored to host you today, and I'd like to thank John Dinkelman, John Demers, Karen Stone, Karen Myers, and Carlos Osorio for attending today's ceremony also. My first duty is to welcome you to my house, so welcome to the National Archives. <laughs> the National Archives serves, as a serves a crucial role as our nation's record keeper. Our mission, as John said, is to collect, protect, and preserve the permanently valuable records of all three branches of the United States government. And we take this responsibility seriously. Public access to government records strengthens democracy by allowing citizens to hold the government accountable, understand their history, and participate more effectively in their government. When President Franklin Roosevelt, who signed the legislation creating the National Archives, articulated his vision and mission when he dedicated his presidential library in Hyde Park, New York. He said, it seems to me that the dedication of a library is in itself an act of faith, to bring together the records of the past and to house them in buildings where they will be preserved for the use of men and women in the future. A nation must believe in three things. It must believe in the past, it must believe in the future, and it must, above all, believe in the capacity of its own people so to learn from the past that they can gain in judgment in creating their own future, creating their own future, our mission. So today, as John said, that collection is actually over 15 billion sheets of paper, 44 million photographs, miles and miles of film and video, and about 6 billion electronic records so far, the fastest growing record form in our collection, and the thing that keeps me up at night. <laughs> These records start with the Oath of Allegiance signed at Valley Forge by George Washington and his troops and go all the way up to the tweets that are being created as I am speaking. <laughs> <laughs> Millions of visitors and researchers visit us to learn more about our nation's history. As John said, we operate 44 facilities in 17 states including the 14 presidential libraries and museums, two research facilities here in D.C., and 14 regional archives around the country. I'm honored to host this important event on behalf of the President, the United States government, the 16 agencies that participate, participated in the project, and the American people. To set the stage and to emphasize its importance, I used my prerogative as archivist to showcase two treasures from our vault. Outside of this room, I hope you saw two treaties on display. In 1822, the United States was the third nation to recognize Argentina's Declaration of Independence from Spain. While our two nations enjoyed good relations and started trading, it was not until July 10, 
1853 that our two nations first formalized bilateral relations with a treaty to allow free navigation on the Parana and Uruguay rivers. This treaty, focused solely on navigation rights, quickly read to an agreement of a broader treaty. And the second treaty, the Treaty of Friendship, Navigation, and Commerce, was signed shortly thereafter on July 27, 1853, and expanded our relationship to include agreements to facilitate increased trade. So please have a look after the ceremony if you haven't already seen them. I also invite you to visit the public vaults in, in our museum, where coincidentally the Treaty of Friendship, Navigation, and Commerce that the Argentine Confederation gave to the United States is now on display. This ornate version includes a skip it with the seal of the Argentine Confederation. <coughs> The U.S. declassification project for Argentina is both a historic and significant project. There have been other declassification projects in the past, but this one stands out for several reasons. First, the project spanned two presidential administrations. President Barack Obama directed agencies to conduct this project after receiving a request from President Markey. And, then, and after President Markey, renewed the request early in this administration. As John said, President Donald Trump directed that it continue. The project is unparalleled for its scope and breadth. 16 executive agencies participated, over 380 employees from these agencies, spending 32,000 hours searching our records and reviewing them for, on a word-for-word -word basis. The results of those reviews are impressive and reflect the President's interest. Over 43,000 pages are about to be public re publicly released, and I think we're going to see and hear, hear about that later. The declassification rate on, on these pages is about 97% and aligns with the President's instruction to release as much information as possible, another historic aspect of this project. Finally, the process, process for organizing and completing this project is unique. I attribute it, its success to the inclusion of all the stakeholders. They include the executive branch agencies working with officials from the Argentine Embassy here in Washington, the United States Embassy in Buenos Aires, and the Argentine government. There, are also, there was also dialogue and communication with the Argentine civil society organizations, including two video conferences historians working closely from within and outside government in cooperation with Carlos Osorio from the National Security Archive. I thank the National Archive staff who participated in this project, staff from the National Declassification Center, the Center for Legislative Archives, the Presidential Materials <coughs> Division, the Office of Innovation, the Information Security Oversight Office, and archivists from the Ford Carter Reagan and George H.W. Bush Presidential Libraries. Our staff played a key role throughout this project. In August 2016, just two months after receiving the presidential directive, the archivists in the presidential libraries quickly compiled and reviewed over 1,000 pages of presidential documents. Secretary of State John Kerry delivered these documents to President Macri later that month on an official trip to Buenos Aires. In December 2016, as the government of Argentina honored the life of former Assistant Secretary of Human Rights and Humanitarian Affairs, Pat Darien, U.S. Ambassador to Argentina, Noah Mamet, delivered an additional 550 pages. These pages remain significant as they include information from 25 presidents' daily briefs from the Carter administrations. Daily, presidential daily briefs, as they're called, are among our nation's most sensitive intelligence documents and are compiled expressly for the president. Few others in government get to read them. The Carter administration records were not scheduled for review until the next decade. These declassified records allow for important context and aid historians in understanding President Carter's actions and policies regarding human rights violations in Argentina. In April 2017, President Trump provided over 3,000 pages of newly declassified documents to President Macri. They included documents from the Carter Library identified by Department of State historians for inclusion in the South America volume on, of the Foreign Relations of the United States series, the official documentary and historical record of major United States foreign policy decisions and activities. 
For this last tranche of records, the staff of the National Declassification Center searched over 740 cubic feet of records and identified over 4,600 pages for inclusion. A cubic foot, for those of you who don't know, is about 3,000 pieces of paper, so 740 cubic feet. They included records created by the Air Force, Army, and Departments of Justice, Labor, and State, the Federal Bureau of Investigation, the Joint Staff, the U.S. Information Agency, and U.S. Agency for International Development. The National Declassification Center staff was supported by declassification professionals from several agencies, and I'd like to thank the staff from the Air Force, the Army, the CIA, the Defense Intelligence Agency, the FBI, the Joint Staff, the Washington Headquarters Services, at the Department of Defense, the Navy, the U.S. Southern <coughs> Command, and the Departments of Justice and State for their work. This collaboration illustrates how the National Declassification Center brings together people and processes within the executive government branch declassification community to advance declassification and public access to historical records. <coughs> there are distinguished retired diplomats here today, like Ted Harris and Fred Rondon, who helped save lives working at the Department of State. And I believe you're, where are you seated? seated? Yeah. There you are. <laughs> Thanks for being here. Thank you. And thank you for what you accomplished. Mario de Carroll, Carroll is here representing his wife, Isabel Mignon. Her sister was arrested and disappeared in 1976. Her mother, Angelica, was one of the founders of the Mothers of the Plaza de Mayo. And her father, Emilio, championed human rights and accountability, including, including testifying in trials. Where are you sitting? Thank you. Thank you for being here. Azul Hidalgo Sola is also here. Her grandfather, Ambassador Hector Hidalgo Sola, was kidnapped and disappeared in July 1977. And where are you sitting? Thank you. The records of Tex Harris and Fred Brondon are here at the National Archives. The records about Monica Mignon and the work of her parents for justice are here, just as records relating to the disappearance of Azul's grandfather are here. They help tell the story of this period in Argentine history and in our own history. On your way into this building this morning, you pass two monumental statues. One statue included the word, study the past. Using archival records, this project was designed to help families and victims find closure, peace, and justice, ensure accountability, and aid judicial processes, aid Argentine citizens understand their history. The other statue included the words, the past is prologue. The declassification of these records greatly aids the national history so that we can learn from it. The lessons from these records and from survivors and those who seek truth and justice for the people of Argentina are meaningful and offer hope for the future. Thank you. victims of human rights abuses during the 1976 to 1983 period 
of military dictatorship. This project demonstrates our shared commitment to promoting open and transparent government. It also reflects the importance of, that the United States places in its relations with Argentina. Over the last three years, more than 16 executive branch departments and agencies reviewed thousands of records of historical significance for the project, including for the first time records from the United States intelligence, law enforcement, and defense agencies. I am proud of our leaders, the dedicated federal workforce, and our civil society partners whose collective efforts resulted in providing the people of Argentina access to more than 7,000 historically significant records. Their contribution is but one example of the great work we expect of our public servants who perform their duties tirelessly to promote American democratic ideals both here and abroad. The release of records constitutes the largest declassification of United States government records directly to a foreign government in history. My hope is that access to these records provides the people of Argentina information to help in the healing process. Sincerely, Donald Trump. Minister Garbano. Good morning, one of the yes. I give a few words in Spanish and then continue in English. Quiero agradecer al Archivo Nacional, quiero agradecer a todo el personal y todas las agencias del gobierno de Estados Unidos que se han involucrado en este proceso, que ha sido, como recién se señaló, un proceso realmente una envergadura y un esfuerzo muy, muy grande. Quiero agradecer a todo el personal de la Embajada Argentina, de la Cancillería Argentina, y muy especialmente quiero agradecer a los familiares de víctimas del terrorismo de Estado que, que acá nos acompañan y que fueron también ellos a través de abuelas de Plaza Mayo y del CELS quienes originariamente hicieron esta solicitud. El presidente Macri tomó, hizo suya y logró, gracias a la excelente relación, primero con el gobierno del presidente Obama y luego con el gobierno del presidente Trump, avanzar en este proceso que realmente creo que es un hecho histórico porque realmente la información va a permitir que, como recién se señaló, los procesos judiciales sigan avanzando y conocer más, conocer a lo mejor el lado oscuro de ese periodo tan oscuro que vivimos en nuestro país y que esto nos ayude a saber que la democracia, que la república está por encima de todo, que es donde están nuestros derechos y garantías aseguradas más allá de las diferencias políticas o ideológicas que podamos tener, eso tiene que ser un presupuesto para siempre en nuestro país. En inglés. En el nombre del presidente Macri y de la gente de Argentina, thank you very much to all of you. Thank you very much for the effort that you do to bring this information to our country information to we help to heal the, the injuries and, and, and to move forward to bring justice, strong justice, memory and truth. The last March 24 marked the 43, 43rd anniversary of the last military coup the start. And the Argentine Republic await with great expectation this document, which will constitute a invaluable contribution to the process of memory, truth, and justice. Our country has reaffirmed its commitment to achieve a fairer, more pacific, and inclusive society. This document that I received today on behalf of the Argentine state make a contribution for building a more democratic society. Thanks to the fruitful dialogue between our nations, we received today the largest release of declassified documents related to the last military dictatorship in our country. The information contained in these documents will be fundamental 
for the Argentine justice to finish investigation cases of the past, which are still pending and are related to one of the darkest times of our history. This is a good news for the Argentine people, to learn from the past and not repeat in the future. This is very emotive moment. It's the achieve of the goal, but at the same time, it's remove uh, the dark past of our history. We thank you and greatly value the fundamental contribution under the strain hinting of our bilateral relations. And this is the result of the new direction of the Argentine foreign policy a new paradigm whose main feature is the dialogue and integration after many years of isolation. It was a large process of work of many people, many agencies, many NGOs, and this removed a lot of a lot of feelings, a lot of feelings. But I think it's an example in both countries how we can get it work together. The different administrations, the different ideologies, the different vision of the world. But we work together with a good objective. We work together for the democracy and for the people. And this is a very important lesson very important lesson. Argentine thanks and values the effort made by the National Security Council of the White House, who was representing him for the disclassification process to the National Archive. Today, we take this opportunity to condemn again the state terrorists and all kinds of terrorists. In these days, a lot of people in all the world suffer the consequences of the terrorism. And we need to work together for a strength the republic, for a strength the democracy, and make a better world for live all together in peace. Thank you very much. To provide more detail about the impact of the release of records in the Argentina declassification project, I'd like to introduce Mr. Carlos Osorio, director of the Southern Cone Documentation Project at the National Security Archive. Since 2002, Carlos has published dozens of briefing books on state terrorism and U.S. policy in Argentina, Paraguay, and Uruguay. He has produced annotated selections of U.S. declassified documents, which the archive, the National Security Archive, provided to judges, lawyers, and human rights groups in Argentina, Uruguay, and Italy. Using U.S. declassified documents and records from regional secret services, Carlos has introduced critical evidence in multiple judicial proceedings, including trials on Operation Condor and Operation Mexico, involving high-ranking former military officers and presidents from Bolivia, Peru, Chile, Argentina, Uruguay, and Paraguay. Carlos has also worked with the Panama Truth Commission and the Guatemala Truth Commission gather documents on military structure, and deaths and disappearances in the 1970s. Carlos has been a partner supporting the Argentina Declassification Project and will speak to its significance to those seeking truth and justice through government accountability and openness. Carlos. Thank you. Thank you for those generous words of introduction. I want to say that it's, it is such an honor to attend this special declassification diplomacy event on Argentina and to participate in this historic turnover of history. I am grateful to, 
to Chief Archivist David Ferriero for hosting this unique gathering. And I want to express my gratitude and that of my organization, the National Security Archive, to everyone at the Argentine Embassy, at the NSC, <laughs> I cannot pinpoint you, um, at the National Archives, who worked so very hard to organize this event on, ev on a very, very short notice. And let me personally extend my own welcome to the Minister of Justice and Human Rights, Germán Caravan. Señor Ministro, bienvenido. Bienvenido a Washington, qué bueno que usted y Argentina ya tienen los documentos desclasificados. Over at my organization, the National Security Archive, my colleagues and I have had the distinct experience of working on a number of major special U.S. government declassification projects like the ones on El Salvador, Guatemala, Peru, Chile, Brazil, etc. And even a previous release of State Department records on Argentina, authorized by President Clinton's Secretary of State Madeleine Albright and completed by the State Department of George W. Bush in 2001. With all that previous experience, we have never witnessed the intensity and commitment by the professionals in the National Security Council and the agencies themselves to finding all the documents and declassifying them as fully as possible. Documents that once look like this <laughs> now look like this. Bravo. I want to commend the Trump administration for supporting this project to completion. I want to commend everyone at the NSC and the agencies that found and reviewed these records for their excellent work in extrica extricating thousands of these records from their SCIFS, those sensitive compartmented information facilities, where these documents lay dormant for, in some cases, more than 40 years. In my mind, you are the liberators of history. You have fulfilled President Obama's original pledge when he authorized this declassification project that we have the responsibility to confront the past with honesty and transparency. You have met what Argentine novel laureate Perez Esquivel called the debt of history the United States has in Argentina. And let me say to John Powers, who deserves special credit for leading the declassification project, you, sir, are the Bolivar, the real Bolivar of this moment. <laughs> and I want to thank you for your efforts to include not only myself in this unforgettable project, but also your outreach to the human rights community in Argentina. The extra efforts you have made to maintain communication with the human rights groups, such as the Abuelas de Plaza de Mayo, is quite commendable. To the human rights groups of Argentina, we owe a special debt of gratitude. Despite the passage of decades, they have kept the memories of the victims of so many atrocities alive and maintain the moral and political pressure on their own government and on all of us to find out what happened to their loved ones and hold those responsible accountable. Finally, I would be remiss if I did not recognize the efforts of those diplomats, policymakers, and national security agents on the ground who generated the paper trail of history that is being declassified today. I want to recognize the work of diplomats. I Bring, bring some, some that bring to mind our uh, Ambassador Robert Hill, who for the first time confronted the military, and he even confronted his superiors at the Department of State. I want to commend fighters, diplomats, such as Tex Harris, whose embassy cables repeatedly call attention to the human rights atrocities that were being committed around him. 
Mr. Harris is here today. Let me share with you our gratitude for participating in the first internal debate over standing up for the principles of human rights and human decency in U.S. foreign policy. You and your colleagues, which I see some around. I think I see Roberta Cohen. And leaders like Patricia Deren and Mark Schneider, and so many others helped to create the historical record on the issue of human rights. It is a historical record that holds many lessons for today and that remains highly relevant as the debate over US foreign policy and human rights is revisited. Now, I have had the opportunity to review some of the extraordinary documents and I wanted to share with you my preliminary evaluation of their importance. They are rich in detail. They are riveting in their content, as grim and sinister and horrific as that content often is in these records of repression. I am certain that this project represents a new model of declassification diplomacy. I am certain that the release of these records is a uniquely valuable contribution to the cause of human rights, the cause of justice, and the cause of our fundamental right to know. <clears throat> that is because these documents name names. They name the names of the per perpetrators and the names of the victims. And they identify the gruesome and reprehensible human rights crimes that were committed. And because they name those names, they provide a level of truth and accountability that many other declassification projects have failed achieve. They will prove extremely valuable in Argentina's ongoing quest for justice, truth, and dignity for the tens of thousands of human rights victims and their families. In a number of cases, these documents will provide those families with the only evidence they have ever had on the fate of their blood. like the tens of thousands of desaparecidos from the era of the military dictatorship, the Argentine archives on repression have also been desaparecidos. Buried, burned, perhaps also thrown into the ocean. In so many cases, the U.S. documents being turned over today to Argentina are, are and will be the only evidence of the fate of so many Argentinians at the hands of the military dictatorship. I have personally experienced the intense warmth of the relatives of the disappeared when I shared previously declassified documents as part of a trial testimony in Argentina. I have heard and seen the gratitude from the children of the disappeared, from the appropriated children of the disappeared coming to me, who have held documents in their hands documents that finally shed light on what happened to their parents and what was their own ordeal. Thank you, they tell me. The documents allow us to touch our loved ones. To all the fighters for the right to know here and in Argentina, I extend that sentiment to you. That, my friends, is the diplomacy of the classification. That is the ultimate meaning of declassification diplomacy in the name of human rights. Thank you.
happily addressed in the back. So Google search will uh, we'll discover them for you. Again, our thanks to the Office of the DNI for the uh, hosting of uh, the documents and the presentation. Uh, I think you'll find that in the A little bit of housekeeping uh, before we go. Keep in mind that all persons, including David Ferriero, who uh, depart the National Archives are subject to security procedures on exit. That's part of the protect and preserve. <laughs> um, and and uh, we'd like to ask our senior government officials uh, to remain here in the front of the room after uh, the ceremony so that we can take some additional photographs. On behalf of the National Archives, the executive branch agencies who participated in the project in the White House, I'd like to thank everyone for attending. Good day.